Here we go. We're, we're going to be joined by two to three middle school students. So here's Sophia. Hi. Oh, there we are. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. We're so happy to be here. We're happy to have you here for this panel or this roundtable that is part of the Raising Good Gamers initiative. Um, and so for those of you that haven't been following along in the festival, we've had a bunch of roundtables and panels and talks that have been part of the Raising Good Gamers initiative. And Raising Good Gamers is a... Um, it's a partnership between the Connected Learning Lab of UC Irvine and Games for Change. And it is really looking at how we can amplify youth voice, give them a seat at the table to really think critically about how we can keep young people safe and happy in online gaming spaces. So today we are joined by two students from Quest to Learn Middle School and some awesome developers and people who work in the games world. And we are gonna have a conversation with the kids about what we're doing well and what we could do better and how we can help meet their needs. Um, so what we're gonna do first are some introductions and then we will um, do a little discussion and then hopefully we'll have time for questions from the audience. So um, without further ado, let me introduce myself and then I'll pass it along. I'm Arana Shapiro. I'm the Managing Director and Chief Learning Officer at Games for Change. And I'm super excited to be here talking to this group. Um, and I guess I will pass it to Laura to go ahead and introduce herself and then she can pass it to the next person. Thanks, Arana. So, I mean, firstly, I'm so happy to be here today. Um, I've been working with uh, th this organization uh, around getting youth voice in front of people. It is so, so important. So I'm really delighted to be here. Thank you again for inviting me. Uh, so my name is Laura Higgins. I'm the Director of Community Safety and Digital Civility at Roblox. Um, I'm going to guess many of you have heard of Roblox, but very briefly, Roblox really is a, a quite a new way really for people to be together and particularly at a time like now when many of us have not been together in person so we're a global community of people come together uh, virtually to share different experiences um, it, we're on a mission to build a human co-experience really that enables all these shared experiences from billions of users every day we have 43 million people around the world coming onto our platform to have fun with their friends as they explore all these immersive experiences um, the platform is very much about creative expression uh, so people uh, uh, around 8 million creators in fact around the world are creating these different experiences and exploring their own identity online identity figuring out who they want to be and creating these experiences and spaces and then inviting others in to experience them with them Rochelle, do you want to go? Sorry, I'll oh, hand it over to okay. Rochelle. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, hi, everyone. I am Rochelle Vallon. I am a guidance counselor at Quest to Learn. Um, so I work with Sophia and Major. Um, I have been a guidance counselor for about 13 years now, and I've been at Quest to Learn for 10 years. Um, I am super excited to be a guidance counselor and member of Quest. We um, deliver curriculum through game like learning um, and design thinking. Um, I've worked on several projects with Games for Change and Raising Good Gamers. So I spoke on a Games for Change panel a couple of years ago on games and how games teach empathy. Um, and I just recently wrapped up a project um, guiding students through creating a TED Talk on the gaming community. Um, so obviously as a guidance counselor, I am a firm believer in student voice and youth voice, um, and particularly in our school, working with games, embracing the gaming culture, and seeing how we can use different facets of gaming and gaming culture to really enhance students, not just personally, but academically. I think it's really important, and I'm very excited to have this conversation to be able to hear from students like Sophia and Major on what really engages them as individuals, as youth? Um, what do they like? What do they see? What do they feel is really providing a sense of community and identity and representation in gaming. So I'm very excited. Um, and I'll pass it along to Afiz. Hello all, my name is Afiz. Um, I am a senior software engineer right now working on Minecraft Education Edition. Uh, similarly to uh, what Laura said, Minecraft is also a game about 
creative expression. Um, many of you are probably familiar with it. Um, I've been in the industry for about eight years now in the gaming industry for more like four or five worked on a more on the platform side for the Xbox and the PlayStation previously. And I joined Minecraft Education Edition last year in July. And I'm excited to be working on it because it's the intersection of all of my passions. And I know the, uh, the benefits of game based learning. I'm probably going to date myself by saying this, but I remember playing Oregon Trail and Math Blaster, <laughs> Carmen San Diego. I see an expression like, well, he's old with no, but, <laughs> <laughs> but so I know the benefits of game based learning and I'm excited to be working on a product that is in that space. Awesome. All right. Um, so let's have our quest students introduce themselves. Major, do you want to go ahead and go first? Sure. Um, my name is Major Martinez. Um, I'm from quest to learn and um, well, I'm 13 years old. My birthday is November 5th, 2007. Um, it's my first year being here, my first time being at the Virtual Games to Change Virtual Festival. I said virtual twice. But um, <laughs> um, my favorite games to play are Minecraft, Roblox, Fortnite, Apex. Well, the list goes on, basically. Um, I don't know. I don't have anything. Awesome. That was perfect. Thank you, Major. And Sophia? Uh, hi, I'm Sophia Jimenez. Um, I go to Quest to Learn as well. Um, I am 12 years old, uh, and uh, this is also my first time doing one of these things. Um, the reason why I play video games could go on for, for hours. Um, just everything about them, uh, soundtracks, uh, art, gameplay, just everything. Um, and some of the games I like to play, um, Minecraft, uh, Undertale, Mario Odyssey, Mario Kart, great. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> great. So we're excited to have Quest to Learn students here because I think they bring a uh, kind of special, um, uh, kind of just a special aspect to the panel because they they understand games in a different way than I think other kids do, right? They've designed, they've gone through game design, courses, they've designed games, they understand the parts of a game, they understand how those parts work together. So we're excited to have you guys here so you can think a little bit about, you know, real the games that are out in the world, how they're designed and how they might be changed or 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 made better by your ideas. So we're going to think today about games that you play online with other kids, right? So both of you play those kinds of games. Do you want to talk a little bit about why you like those kinds of games? Well, I like Minecraft because it's somewhat educational. It has good lore and backstory to it. Um, it's creative. I get to build lots of things, nice houses, stuff that I like. Um, the mechanics are pretty fun, and you get to play around with your friends. You can do parkour. Like, there's like little like there's like maps and stuff that you can go to. Like where you can play mini games inside the game, so it's like it's pretty fun. Same thing for Roblox. So yeah. What do you think, Sophia? Um, pretty much the same thing. I don't play Roblox too too much. Um, I play it like once in a blue moon, but Minecraft I play it a lot. Um, and I love it for basically just the same reasons. Um, I love being able to talk to other people and like people who love different parts of the game, like parkour or PvP or building, or just like just there's like so many um like there's like one big amazing community and then so many different other amazing smaller com communities. Um, again, amazing lore. Um, I love all the details and all of the graphics. Um, I love all the servers and all the maps. High pixels, great. Um, and I just really love all the different aspects of. Um, uh, sorry, I really just love all the different aspects of the game and how different people have used like all the blocks and all of the items in different ways that other people haven't thought of before and the different ways that people make content with it. And so I guess, you know, we're here today because we have we have people here from Roblox and Minecraft to, and they want to learn from you about the ways that you play and the things that you've experienced when you're playing and um, and how they might be able to make things even better and even more fun than they are right now and even more um, 
positive maybe than they are right now. So I wonder um, if you guys have either ideas or questions for these guys that that you might be you might want to ask or start to talk about so because we've talked a little bit before this about ways that we think it could maybe be better or questions you have but i'm just going to open it up to to let you the four of you sort of have a conversation rochelle i don't know if you want to frame it in any other way than i did um, yeah I, yeah i think that's perfect framing and i think this is you know certainly other students will be very jealous of this opportunity and perhaps you can also speak on things that maybe you've discussed with your peers um and things that you know other youth have brought up um so thinking about the things that you love which you guys did a great job of mentioning um what are some aspects of either roblox or minecraft or games in general and I think you guys did a great job of thinking about the different categories, right? So when it comes to music, characters and representation, the space, the action that you're doing in the game, what are some things that you would share with Laura and Afiz that you think could make Roblox or Minecraft um, better and think about those different areas that you both brought up? So who wants to, who wants to go first with mm -hmm. some ideas? Uh, I mean, I don't really know if this is a super good question. It like kind of starts off with a comment, but it's also kind of a question. Um, in Minecraft, there are, like in the most recent update, they changed some of the ores to, like instead of them being so similar, they're different. Um, like all the ores like, look different now so that people who are colorblind can like tell what the ores are. So it's like mining and being like, this is wrong. And then <laughs> having to get rid of it. Um, and then also there's a way to turn on captions for people who are deaf and who are like are hard of hearing and you could hear the things, um, but it's, you know, anger. Um, but yeah, um, is there really any other way to help people with other sorts of disabilities? I can't really think of any at the moment, but. Yeah, so. It's a very good question, actually. Um, I think that as a team, we're constantly looking for additional ways to do that. Um, if you look at gaming, I mean, as an industry in general, even like 15, 20 years ago, right? A lot of times if you, you, know, you had a, a certain impairment or something, you just couldn't play a game, right? They would just put in the manual, hey, if you, if you experience seizures, if you experience this, or if you experience that, don't play the game. You know, or consult a doctor before playing the game. And I think that it took some time, but I'm glad that as an industry, we're finally looking at things we can do to um, kind of, you know, rectify those issues and, and enable people to um, still experience the game in a fun way, even if, you know, they're colorblind, for example, or if they're deaf. Um, I don't know off top exactly what we're doing because I don't work as much on accessibility, but I do know that about a week or two ago, we had a, like a company-wide hackathon, or a studio-wide hackathon, essentially. And there were definitely some accessibility features in the pipeline that I'm not sure if I can actually mention. I don't know how secret they are, but <laughs> just know that it's something that we're constantly thinking about. And in the future, I am assuming we're gonna have a lot more, uh, a lot more of these features introduced into the game. Thanks for the uh, so I would I, I would echo exactly what Afi said. You know, this is making sure that our platforms are inclusive for everybody and representative of everybody is so very important. So we we equally have our little hackathons, and hopefully we'll also be able to show some of the good things we're doing. Um, I think you know one of the most amazing things I get to do specifically in my job is to go out and hang out with the community and meet with young people and users of the platform and listening to them on we know what the issues are for them, things they would like us to improve on. We can't always do all of them, of course, but actually, you know, I'm quite old. I've worked in sort of online safety for a very long time. So I can make assumptions about things we must do as an industry standard to keep people safe and have a good time on the platform. But there are other things that perhaps I might not understand or know about. And it's only by going out and speaking with the people on the platform and the community, experts in the field, other organizations, for example, who support people who have additional needs, that we really get a better understanding of the things we need to all get better at and keep kind of um, evolving and innovating in the space. Um, so yeah, that is, it's a great question. And I think, as Afi said, you know, we've come a long way, but we still have a way to go. We still need to keep trying to push those barriers to make sure that it's a space that's welcoming for everybody. 
Yeah, sorry, one more thing. I wanted to say that, um, like Laura said, um, I think meetings like this kind of, you know, um, show the importance of, you know, uh, this of accessibility and these types of things. I think that kind of like Laura said, we as people in the industry think about this, right? But we only know so much. And this is like anybody in any field, you only know so much. So it's important to engage the, com um, the community and events like this are helping us do that. So once again, um, I wanna say thank you for, for scheduling this and, and attending this. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, Sophia, that was an excellent question. And, you know, it makes me think as a guidance counselor, you know, one of, I had this discussion in a previous panel actually about, you know, how, you know, gaming is not going anywhere, which is great. And we want to infuse it and incorporate it in the education space as much as possible. And how are there aspects um, in the gaming space that really create that safe atmosphere and that inclusive atmosphere for some students where maybe, unfortunately, it may not exist in the school setting if a student feels outcast. And if Sophia and, and Major, you have any of those experiences or want to share how games and gaming culture have made you feel included or safe, and what are some of the things that you feel maybe Minecraft and Roblox are doing really well? Um, and Sophia, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you have such great insight about representation. Um, and we were talking about this before about characters, specifically female characters, and how some games may unfortunately stereotype what it means to look like a female and look like a female character. So maybe if you want to elaborate and, and, and uh, Major, you can jump in too. Maybe what are some of the things that Minecraft and Roblox are doing really well in terms of representation? Um, so Sophia gave some examples. Or maybe what are some things you've seen in other games that maybe you would want to share with Afiz and Laura? Um, so for example, Sophia, when you spoke about some games that over-stereotype female characters, maybe that's something that you would share with Laura and Afiz to say, please don't do that <laughs> um, in their games. So just curious to see what you guys think about like representation in games. How do you feel as an individual and what are things you would like to share with them? I know that was a long question. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Um, thank you so much uh, for the nice, nice words. Thank you. Um, uh, again, I don't do a lot of things on Roblox, but I have seen something, and it kind of correlates to Roblox a bit as well. But um, in Minecraft, there is this huge acceptance of uh, the LGBTQ plus community, and it is great to see. Because uh, during Pride Month, uh, I'm a part of the community. Um, but during Pride Month, I went on Hypixel and I did some Bed Wars things. And I was like, no, I'm just going to go into the chat and just say happy Pride Month to people. And in one of the rooms, there, there, was, there were some homophobic people. It, and it was not the funnest thing. But there were also a good amount of people who were a part of or supported the community that kind of stepped up and was like, hey, why? <laughs> um, so this, the, I don't know, the communities and also like in Roblox, um, I've played a little bit of it, but there's also a good community there as well. Um, but yeah, this is a kind of representation and um, yeah, a lot of acceptance around other things like that as well, not just them. May I jump in? So of I, one of our absolute core values at Roblox is about the freedom to be who you want to be and self-expression and being able to create who you want to be and also the spaces that you want to be in, in an online world. So we have a hugely diverse community who we both celebrate and support. Um, and so, for example, just through the pandemic and the awful time that we've all been going through, we've had 100% growth in female developers creating games that they feel is more representative and a safer space for young women to the point of there are certain games that might stereotype what you know what women look like in games um we have you know as i say this beautiful diverse community who are very very supportive of one another um and they feel safe to to be themselves even when you look at things like our avatars it's not kind of particularly gendered you can be whatever you want to be um and you can create 
uh, various versions of yourself while you're maybe kind of trying out who it is that you might want to be and your online version might be very different or very similar to the one that you are in the real real world um, so yeah for us building this safe and civil and diverse community is one of our key things and it starts with really young people as well so of course our responsibility is to kind of put the safety uh, guards around so we do the moderation and the safety and and all of those things to make sure people can have the um, freedom to test these things but then also to kind of amplify the voices and ensure that they they have um, a voice and uh, can be really proud of, of who they want to be when they're online as well. It's, it's a great place for young people perhaps to experiment when it might be a bit scary to do that in the real world. Yeah, so um, Sophia, you kind of mentioned uh, when you were in that chat, people were making um, discriminatory comments and, you know, saying inappropriate things. And sadly, it's like, you know, we can't really eliminate that entirely you know there are also unfortunately going to be people that you know think that way and behave in that manner but i think that education is a huge part of reducing you know the amount of people at least that you know that speak in that way and behave in that way and part of the reason or part of what we're doing here at minecraft to um educate folks is we have good trouble lessons and um we've been doing those for i think it's maybe three four months i, I was on one of the live streams that we had for that but the idea is you know we take um known respected figures from like different different cultures, different backgrounds. And we create lessons about these individuals to hopefully educate people, you know, as they're playing this game. Um, because I think in general in life, you know, there are people, there are some people who just, regardless of what you say to them, you know, they're just gonna continue to behave in that way. But there are a lot of people who are just kind of ignorant, you know? And I think if we take the time to really engage some of these individuals, we'll hopefully be able to, as um, cliche as this sounds, you know, make the world a better place. I, I also think, I'm just going to add to that, that I think it's also education, not just for the people who are acting badly, but also education for people who are there and being targeted on how to deal with it, right? So, so it gives mm -hmm. a practice space for you, so, right? Sophia, you get to practice how you react to things in that space. If things are coming at you, like, do you walk away? Do you stand up for other kids? Do you, like, there's a lot of different options. And I think one of the things that both Roblox and Minecraft is doing well is that it's giving you the practice space, right? Is what it sounds like. Um, anyway. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, th yeah, I, I was, Afiz, you were speaking my language and I was like, yes, because this is exactly, you know, it's like you said, it's all about education and in the school space, it's the same thing. And I think, um, you know, again, in another panel, we spoke about the parent perspective as well and why it's important for um, kind of both worlds to come together and for the, for the parent piece to be strong as well, because I think there's unfortunately this um, misunderstanding that, you know, gaming is separate or there's something separate happening, but there are a lot of the same lessons and the same skills necessary. Um, and a lot of times in a gaming space, which is what attracted me to Quest to Learn, it's really teaching students in a way that is disarming. Um, you know, sometimes in a school space where a lot of it is teacher led and a lot of it is adult led, um, you know, it can feel in intimidating or it can feel like we're putting on to the students. Whereas in a gaming space, you're kind of learning these things with the support of the developers and the things that are embedded into the games. Um, and I think that kind of segues a little bit and it got me thinking about what Major was talking about. And Major, if you want to share um, in terms of, you know, how do we handle these things? Like the good trouble lessons are awesome. And we use Minecraft a lot in at Quest. So I would love to make use of the good trouble lessons. Um, so thinking about like, what are some things, because like Arana said, those things are kind of always going to exist. I can't remember if it was a fees or Rana. Fees Those things it, are but... always going to exist, <laughs> right? So we can learn how to, to respond to them. We can educate people. Um, but then what are some other things? So in the school space, we think about how do we educate students? And then what are the things that the school needs to do also? What, are, what do we put in place? So Major, you were talking about some things before about what are some ideas maybe you would like to see from Minecraft or Roblox on if you're playing and maybe people are not responding nicely or they're creating a toxic environment or maybe they're bullying other people. If you wanna share some of the ideas that you shared with us before. Um, yeah, I feel like that they should take out um, 
in-game, well, the in-game currency of Roblox because people can get bullied for not having certain stuff because, um, the Roblox community is somewhat, con like, like, with younger kids and younger viewers, like, um, seven-year-olds, five-year-olds, younger people, so for them not having, like, a certain item or, like, a certain clothing in the game, they can get bullied for, like, being... Like, they can call them, oh, you're poor, and all this other mean stuff. You have no money. You're homeless. And all this other rude stuff. I feel like that they should get rid of the Robux currency because it could be unfair for certain kids that play the game and they can get bullied over stuff like that. Okay, well, thanks, Major. I mean, that was... Yeah, tough to hear, but I think it's a really, really important thing to talk about. So believe it or not, there's a huge, huge number of people come on our platform who actually don't spend money. Um, and we do try to make it as much free to play as possible. Um, I do really understand the kind of the, the pressure to want to fit in and have what other people have got. And I think that's something that we all need to work towards. So within Roblox, you know, we try to give away as many things as possible to give that level playing field where everybody can have this access to the same things. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I think that that's one thing. Interesting about the age demographic of, that you've mentioned with Roblox. So actually our highest growing number of people on the platform now is 13 plus up to young adults. <laughs> <laughs> which oh, is really nice. interesting yeah so um yeah about about half the people on the platform now are kind of older teenagers and, and young adults so which... so yeah the thing with younger kids and stuff like that is that most of them don't really know like how the money system works and it's not guaranteed for a kid to always get what they want so it's so it's kind of pointless <laughs> for it to be there because they can't really spend money or like they don't have a job to like earn Robux in a way. So, yeah. I think that's so, fair. And and so a big part of my job is around educating both the community and parents and educators and, and the, the broader community on these things. Um, and yeah, I think to your point, maybe I'm not doing the greatest job at some of those conversations. <laughs> so I'll take that away. Thank you, Major. <laughs> So that's an interesting point, Major. It seems like you're talking about how can we kind of leverage different parts in a game, right, to um, support different types of users. Um, and how might those parts in a game translate differently depending on, like, the age of the user. Um, so that's certainly one area. And then I'm putting Major on the spot again because he had such great ideas. Major, you were also talking about, like, um, what I think some people might refer to as moderating. Um, so you were talking about like screenshots or somehow how do we kind of support users and gamers when they're in conversation with each other? Do you want to talk a little bit about those ideas? Well, yeah, where it shows like where there's like a bot or like someone that's just spectating the chat and watching what's going on. And it can also spectate, like, it's like a security camera, right? So it can it can see everything that's going on in the game. It can see everyone's screen. Because yesterday, I actually had a friend that was playing a certain game and got hacked. So he couldn't play, like, this certain game for, like, a certain amount of time. And I don't know if, uh, if a developer knew about it. Because he got banned for an, a certain amount of time because he got hacked by someone. So, yeah, I think that they should do something about that and where they spectate it and see what happens. Yeah. Because mm. I can't play with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I uh, address that? Yeah. yeah. So, Major, to your point, um, one, that's rough. Um, I apologize for that because I know. I see my cousin, I have a cousin about your age, right? And I see the excitement that he has when he's playing with his friends. And he can't play with some of his friends just because, you know, he has an Xbox and they had a PlayStation, right? So there's a lot of, you know, a variety of problems that come up. Um, the moderation, uh, that, that topic is very challenging because kind of like you mentioned bots, for example, right? And the thing is when this individual, when your friend's account got hacked, right? There was probably some level of, you know, AI that was involved that's okay, you know, this person is saying certain things they shouldn't be saying or doing something that they shouldn't be doing. So now we're gonna ban them, right? 
but the moderator didn't necessarily know that your friend's account got hacked, right? So it's a, it's just a very challenging thing to do, but know that um, we are constantly looking for new ways to, um, to more effectively you know, moderate, moderate these chats and moderate these gaming sessions. But it's kind of like real life, right? Like you have banks, you have anywhere essentially, and there's security, right? You have security cameras, you have security guards, but you know, banks still get robbed, the security still gets breached, you know? And it's very similar with, you know, anything cyber as well. But there are just different, you know, mechanisms in place to try to prevent it. But unfortunately, those breaches are going to happen. And then the goal when they happen is to say, okay, well, what happened? How can we learn from it? And how can we prevent it in the future? But it's just a constant, you know, back and forth. It's like a second form. Go, go ahead, Sophia. Thank you. Um, so something that um, uh, I want to talk about with the conversation that we're ha having right now, and I'll just going back to something they were talking about a little bit before. Um, parents put in chat like this we we think it would be beneficial to like have like uh, mentors come to uh, people who are new to games. Um, and I don't think like maybe not with like single player games like in. Um, Minecraft again. I don't really know a lot about how Roblox works, um, but and also I don't know if there are like admins and like or like third and um, like admins in Roblox servers. I don't know a lot about Roblox. Uh, I do know a lot about Minecraft though. Um, but I think so. There um like in servers like Hypixel and like Skyblock and stuff like that. Um, there are like admins and like the owners to that are like monitoring. The, um, the chat and like uh, there are little messages to uh, show people like how to deal with certain things. But I think if it was like a little bit more um, apparent or like a way that was a little bit more clear to people of like how to deal with things or like how to report things um, or like see like uh, a little bit more specific set of goals, I think that would help a lot with like, the service. I can take that one if you like. Um, and and a, a fantastic point, Sophia. I totally agree. Um, you know, Major has kind of touched on this earlier about particularly as we're getting older people on the platform as well as kind of the younger demographic. And most of them are people who've grown up with us. So probably have learned where the tools are, how to manage certain situations. But I think you're right. It's about us having the right messaging for the right age groups and putting it in the right places. You know, when you're just starting out learning about online platforms and how to conduct yourself and especially how to deal with any troubles that you might come across when you're online, you're not necessarily going to know, oh, I have to look for a cog or three dots or where you're going to find things. And I think, you know, we all as an industry have a responsibility to make it as easy as possible, both from our point of view of protecting, but also for you to feel empowered to be able to resolve issues. Um, again, a big bit of my work isn't necessarily just about the tools, but it's about the conversations and helping people to understand, you know, for example, just like we would outside of the online world, how to resolve conflict, how to confidently say to somebody, no, actually, I'm not comfortable with that. Or no, we don't put up with those sorts of behaviors on this platform. That's not that's not cool here. Um, you know, the things about being an upstander and supporting your friends and feeling confident to do that. As I say, our responsibility is to give you the tools and, and those things. But I think it's a really nice balance. Um, but as you say, it needs to be clear it needs to be upfront and really easily understood for every age group and every different kind of audience within the platforms and again you know back to what we were saying earlier we've come a really long way from where we were mm -hmm. but it's something we're always kind of working on innovating on looking for new new ideas and again back to these sorts of conversations sometimes is where we have that moment go aha you've just really taught us something about what you actually need as opposed to what we assume you need so yeah really really important <laughs> um so great so so you know we we have a few questions in the chat that maybe we can address while as we keep going um there was a question about why other players need to know how many robux other players have and i and 
It was answered by a by another participant, but I'm interested to hear from Major, who was talking about it. Like, is it that you actually know how much Robux other kids have, or is it the stuff that they're able to? It's more of the stuff that they like put on and wear, like in the game. Because if it's something that's like, like I mean, they should be able to tell if something was bought with Robux or if it was for free. Usually people that don't buy stuff at Robux usually don't have anything on or have a base, like, character or skin on. So, yeah. So it's more just like you kind of can, you can, you can tell by what they have. You right? can kind of make an, a, a, yeah. an assumption. It's interesting because it makes me think about in the school setting, like, you know, the age old debate of uniforms, um, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of, a lot of people will say they, they prefer uniforms or families will say they prefer uniforms because it eliminates that bullying or feeling like, you know, students need to have the latest sneakers, X, Y, and Z. I think it again goes back to kind of that moderator conversation. And Laura, I'm curious your point of view from Roblox, because I think certainly there's value in perhaps modifying some of that, but then also it goes back to perhaps, is it that we want to remove these things to avoid the bullying or do we want to create a teaching opportunity to avoid the bullying. So I'm just curious your kind of thoughts on that. So, I mean, one of the things within Roblox is that we don't create any of the experiences on there. So the developers who create each of those experiences um, and most of the things within the catalog are created by the community, they're user generated. So actually this is about them saying, this is my item and I would like to sell it for X amount. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, we, <laughs> for many, many young people, they've created fantastic careers out of it and and uh you know and now have studios in fact within roblox where they're employing other staff so obviously in that sense it's a wonderful thing to see i absolutely agree with you however that we don't want anybody to ever feel that they're missing out or that they're not included in the community so as i say our base level is that it's free to play and anybody can join in and, and around half the people on the platform still don't spend money you know um there is always going to be, as you say, that real world feeling of you have more, I have less. And so teachable moments for us are really important. And it works both ways. One mm -hmm. is we understand that perhaps, you know, you do feel that you're missing out. Here's the way that we can perhaps try to balance that a little for you. Also, when you have people who are not just flashing that they have these things, but perhaps using it in a really negative way of, bullying or whatever then we really need to be dealing with that as well that is not okay on our platform and it's not shouldn't be allowed on most other platforms as well you know i remember uh, a few years ago the term noob was thrown around everywhere and the biggest way that it was used is you're new you don't have anything not only are you new to the platform and don't know what you're doing but it was often referred to as the like the basic skins or whatever that people had when they were playing games um and so i think both online and platforms and parents and educators, we all need to talk about what that means and actually transfer that into, we are really talking about a bit of bullying and how we can tackle that because that's the real issue. Um, but yes, I agree, you know, we, we want to, as I say, create a place that everybody feels welcome. And so if there is more that we can do in that area, it's definitely something we will look at. Um, but obviously, you know, we have children playing all over the world, teenagers all over the world, 180 countries and wow. you know in some of those places for example spending money on games is just not allowed regardless of whether people are wealthy or from poorer families it's you know that's just not uh, okay so it's it's a difficult one to balance um i wonder sophia i see that you answered this question in the chat but i do wonder if you could talk a little bit about how comfortable you are addressing the behaviors because it really it kind of speaks to this idea that i think adults have right that well some adults have that we want to give kids that kids are capable right that you guys are capable of speaking up for yourself of telling people how you feel mm -hmm. and and you and that's a skill that we want you to learn and so so in some ways we don't want to get rid of all the negative behavior because we want you to be able to practice it a little bit but we want but if you're not comfortable practicing it then it's then it doesn't do any good right so i do i am curious about how comfortable you feel when you see if it's if, even if it's not directed at you like would you do you say do you tend to say stuff do you tend to like not say stuff is it 
or do you, do you just kind of walk away? Like, how comfortable are you in that space? Um, I, I don't really know. Um, but the best I can say is like, um, I mean, only like now am I only starting to learn how to actually deal with those kinds of things in like a calm way because I am a very salty child. <laughs> I get very <laughs> angry quickly. I admit it. I'm very angry. <laughs> Um, and like only now am I learning how to like realize that these people are behind a screen and they're only doing that because they're brave most of the time. And I, there's really no reason for me to get really, really, really upset about it unless it's like really bad. And, um, so I'm kind of only really now learning how to deal with that. Um, but if, uh, I, I, I can use like um, the experience during Pride Month as an example. Um, like usually with that kind of stuff, I might have gotten really upset. Um, but I would just put, I don't even think I put Happy Pride Month in chat at first. I think someone said, it's Pride Month, I'm homophobic and I'm proud. And I was like, all right, thank you for letting me know. Um, but that's that's kind of all I put. I was just kind of like, um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't see why. And like different people were agreeing with that person, but like basically the me and like the other people who were trying to like kind of um, say the opposite of that were just kind of like, yeah, why though? We're not doing anything, and we were just kind of <laughs> we were just kind of um, staying calm. And you had some support from other people, so it wasn't just you going at it alone, right? Sounds like, yeah. And also, if I can add something else, it kind of depends on what the situation is for me. I don't know about Maker or anyone else, but like, if it's something like that, and it's just kind of like a, a dumb comment that I can just kind of like brush away and be like, I don't care, um, like then I'll be fine. And I'll just be like, I'll just kind of giggle at it because I'm like, and, um, but if it's something super serious, like, I don't know, trigger warning for anyone, but like people telling someone else to kill themselves. That's really, really, really not okay. So it kind of depends on the situation for me. Yeah. yeah. I kind of want to touch a little bit on Yeah, that. go for it. First thing I wanted to say is, Laura, I'm glad the question was directed at uh, Roblox and getting rid of, you know, Robux instead of uh, mine coins, because <clears throat> uh, the finance department would not. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that um, it's just very interesting because a lot of the things, you know, that Sophia and Major are mentioning right now, and I think Rochelle, you touched upon this a little bit too. Is um, these are real life things, even outside of games, you know, that that we we deal with as well. Um, I know I dealt with this when I was a kid. It wasn't in gaming because we weren't playing games online, but it was, oh, you're at school and, oh, you don't have lunch money or, oh, you only have this. We have the Kool-Aid jammers. Well, you're drinking from this old school juice box. You know, it was always, it was always something else, you know? And um, it's just very interesting how, um, you know, human nature comes out in like whatever thing we're doing, you know, whether it's real life, whether it's in gaming or whether it's outside of that. Um, I, I do agree that, you know, it's it's horrible, it's terrible, and we should continue to try to find ways to stop it, um, even outside of gaming, right? Because I feel like that's the bigger issue. It's an issue of bullying, right? I mean, if people are bullying each other in games, they're probably also doing it outside of games. And though, like Sophia mentioned, there are people who get much more bold when they're behind the screen and they can't be seen, you know? But chances are they're probably also bullying somebody in real life. It might even be a sibling, right? You know, it's just a lot of people do that. So we definitely need to continue to find ways to um, to prevent it. Um, I know that being able to report people in games is a helpful thing. Um, I don't remember who mentioned it originally, but making sure that uh, we we present tools, you know, for, for for people to report these issues in a in a way that makes it easy for the for the individuals or the players to do it is also very important. But um, it's it's a hard problem to it's a hard problem to fix. And I think that when it comes to um, the currency in the game, once again, that's something that's just like in real life. It's like, oh, you, you have Skechers and this other person has, you know, the new Air Force Ones, you know, real, real life situations that I experienced in my life. But, <laughs> but um, I think that um, maybe there are some systems that we can put in place in these games. Like, I hate virtual currency. I'm going to say that right now. Um, 
Major, I don't know if you play 2K or Sophia, I don't know if you play 2K, but you have to buy, uh, for, yeah, you have to buy virtual currency and things like that, but you do also earn some. You earn a ridiculously small amount to the point where it's not really worth it. But I mean, you do earn some. So maybe those are things that we can put in place in some of these games so that um, if, a, if a person doesn't have you know money to buy the coins, maybe just by playing the game or by completing something in the game, you know, they'll, they'll earn some of those uh, Robux or, or whatever, and then they can use that to, you know, to buy things. But also, depending on the age group, I mean, let's be real, adults bully each other too, sadly. But I think that um, it might affect certain groups more than other groups. So maybe we can say, okay, well, within this certain age group, maybe we don't have this in-game currency. Or maybe we have less of it, or maybe we give people the opportunity to earn, you know, these skins or whatever in other ways outside of paying for it, you know? So that's just a few options. Yeah. Major, go ahead. But yeah. So, but what I was going to say, like to add on with the, um, with the currency. So I see in certain games where they do have, like, where you do have to pay Robux for stuff. I don't, I mean... Well, I don't completely hate the idea of Robux being a thing, but I kind of find that in certain games, it's just like, <laughs> because they overprice certain amounts of, like, Robux. Like, I see games where you need to pay 6,999 Robux, for example. So then, and then it's not really worth it when you actually have it, though. Like, it's not guaranteed for you to get something good. Like, for so when I said that, there's this game that I play, it's like um, a Roblox game, it's called Grand Piece Online or whatever. And the item that like that costs that a certain amount of money is the Devil Fruit Notifier. So, whenever said Devil Fruit spawns, it's like three to four hours, which is a complete waste of time. You don't even get like a good Devil Fruit when you do find it, it's like some trash Devil Fruit that you get. And it's almost guaranteed for you to get something trash almost every time when you pay like $80 for an item that's not even worth it. When you can do other stuff without having to pay your money and get better items. So obviously I'm not familiar with that particular experience, um, but noted, I have been taking notes. And that's why these <laughs> things are so important for all of us. Um, as I say, we we don't set the rules, particularly on individual items that the developers who create these experiences do. And as much as, you know, our responsibility of educating the wider community, we also need to work with our developers to give them this kind of feedback. Now, what we often see is if people are not having a good time or they're feeling that they're kind of being pressured into spending money, they will just leave. And, you know, there are millions and millions of experiences on, on, on Roblox and you will see them just bomb. They're not popular at all. Um, you know, I'm, obviously, I'm going to go and have a little look into what you've just shared with me because that's quite unusual, I think, for the platform. We certainly we don't want to encourage games where you have to pay to get through a platform game or anything like that or to, or to progress. That's that's not what we're about. That's not a healthy thing. Um, and so, yeah, certainly I, I will go and have a little look into that because, you know, no platform really should be doing that. And especially from from your point of view as and not only am I spending this money, but it's so disappointing at the end. Um, you know, that, that's not a good experience for anyone. And, and so that's not just specific to our platform. But yeah, definitely, because, that's not a positive. Because it feels like a waste of money to get something that costs. Well, well, it's a waste of money to get it because if it costs like $80, then you spend your $80 on something that was even worth it when you could have got a whole nother game or like something else yeah that absolutely i i, I totally understand major and you know to, to afiz's point you know we want to be able to have experiences where okay yeah some people if they have got more money and they want to spend it on, a, on an experience they can but for other people you should still be able to go and earn it you should be able to get it another way um, because that that is much more reflective of, of real life and so yeah i've noted your feedback thank you major i might ask to come back to you with that after this call <laughs> <laughs> um so so we are just at time. Um, I don't know if any of the panelists have um, any last points they want to make or final words. Um, but go ahead. I had a little bit, just a real yeah, quick thing I want yeah. to say to Major. Um, one, you are thinking just like an adult. You're like, 
I just spent eighty dollars on this. This better be the best thing <laughs> ever. Just a waste of my money. That's stuff my dad used to say when I was a kid. I was gonna say that at thirteen. I just wanted stuff, and he's like, fifty dollars. Like, <laughs> but I think that this goes to the. It's the age old fight between like developers and the business side. And I say this as a gamer, and I understand that somebody is paying my salary, so I'll tread carefully. But. Um, <laughs> I think that as a gamer and as a developer, we typically are of the opinion that we just want to put everything in the game. We want to make it amazing. We want the user to get a great experience. But there's always that, you know, the business aspect of it where they're like, okay, but we have to make money or you're not going to have a job or a computer to write this code and to be able to ship it out to the customers, you know? So I think it's really about striking a balance. Um, at the end of the day, it's like, as developers, we're not going to be able to say, okay, we're just going to make this game. It's going to be free. Um, but we also don't want, you know, the business side to be able to say, all right, well, we're going to charge for every single line of code that you wrote. So I, I think that is, like Laura said, it's definitely about a balance. And, and, and I agree that it's important to be able to go back and tell these developers, because it's kind of like a free marketplace where they set their price, you know, go back and tell them, give them this feedback. Hey, um, you know, this is how the people, this is how your users feel about this. And here are some ideas that um, maybe you can use to um, better price your, your content in the future. All right. And I go on, Major. One. Um, so I have one more question. Um, will there be like age based matchmaking where if, if like there's a certain age group that you can only play within because sometimes people can run into child predators and stuff like that? Like, uh. Okay, I mean that's that's a big one. That's a big um, obviously, question. Obviously, we we spend most of our time trying to make sure there are not child predators on the platform, um, and so you know, obviously, if ever you did feel that somebody was not appropriate, then please, first thing is always tell somebody and tell us as well because they're not welcome on our platform, of course. Um, in terms of age. I agree with you, you know, and even just for fun, you probably may not want to hang out with an eight year old anymore and you probably don't want to hang out with a 16 year old either. So it is definitely something that we're looking at that we're going to be working on. Um, there was an announcement about us looking at kind of age rating some of the games to make sure that the right people are playing the right games and with the right people. Uh, so that's something that's going to be coming in the future. Because it just seems wrong. Like just seeing a bunch of 16 year olds bullying a nine year old. Now, just imagine how that would be like in real life. A bunch of tall 16-year-old dudes bullying some little 9-year-old kid. That'd be messed up. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, like it doesn't seem right. Uh, so. ab absolutely, Major. And, and I'm really sorry that you feel that there's bullying on Roblox <laughs> because we don't tolerate it at all. Um, so, and... and you know, I, I agree with you. People need to be in, in a safe place for them and then the right place for them. But every every 13 year old's different, every 16 year old's different. As I say, the one rule, it doesn't matter if you're 13 or 16, bullying's never okay. And sometimes like, like some kids won't be able to like take certain jokes or understand certain things. So that, yeah, also in that case too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's some some of the stuff you're bringing up, Major, stuff that I've heard from other students is something that happens across many games. Um, and I think somebody put, I think Terrence put in the chat, which got me thinking that I think it's a larger community issue. And this is why as a guidance counselor I at Quest to Learn, I, I feel very strongly about incorporating games and game like learning into education because I think you know, it's you. We run into problems when we compartmentalize things and and try to solve a problem or or um, come to a common goal separately. Um, and I think that if you know, it's not just one aspect that is responsible for youth voice or safety or bullying or education. It's not solely Roblox and Minecraft. It's not solely Quest to Learn. It's not solely parents. And how do we kind of come together to say, okay? You know, maybe it's not censorship. Maybe it's not removing um, Robux. Maybe it's making minor tweaks. Maybe it's more education on the school side. Maybe it's integrating Roblox into our our school the way we do with Minecraft. Or it's all of those things. Or it's right? all of those or things. Of those, right? all of those yeah. Things. So I think yeah. everybody really touched on amazing points that, as Terrence in the chat mentioned, I think it all comes down to how do we all, as different stakeholders in this large community, with youth voice being the lead, how do we figure out like, you know, how do I as an educator add in? How do the developers add in? How do the users add in to to get as close to the goal of 
having fun and having fun safely. Okay, so with that, we are we are over time. So I just want to thank every oh Sophia, you're back. I'm glad you're back for the for the end. Of, <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for our other panelists for joining and the audience for engaging. And we're raising good gamers is going to continue this conversation. Um, so you know we hope everyone will be a part of it as we continue down this path. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thanks so much, everyone.